What up, people? It's your boy, Master Chudy, out here with another video. I'm still on my Mario High. Once again, Mario, great film. Fun film. If you love the video games, if you are a video game fan, if you're a Mario fan, I recommend that you go see it. Please go see it. I plan on seeing it again because I had a lot of fun with it. <clears throat> but that's not the purpose of this video. As it's been discussed, um, a lot of people, and I've heard obviously from WDW Pro, that there is a Nintendo Cinematic Universe, and then with the success of Mario, it's all but been confirmed, and everybody is hyped about it. Everybody wants a piece of that Nintendo Cinematic Universe action. People are asking for your Donkey Kong movies, maybe a Luigi-focused movie, you know, a Peach-focused movie, you got your Shamus from Metroid Prime, where they want to have a movie. Everybody's talking about Link as well, The Legend of Zelda, you need to get him something. Maybe you can even get an F-51 game with Captain Fal a movie with Captain Falcon. Who knows? This could also lead to more um more hope for maybe a Pokemon movie that doesn't necessarily have uh, uh human characters like Detective Pikachu, which is an okay film, but that is that. However, I'm here to give you a couple of reasons why. If there's a real film that deserves immediate production and should be the first to come up with in terms of launching a different character in this Nintendo Cinematic Universe, it should be Star Fox. Now, let me give you clarity about what Star Fox means to me. I played the Nintendo 64 game of it. I beat that game constantly, amount of times. I really love the game and whatnot. Um, in addition to that, while I never got a GameCube and I was never a GameCube person or Nintendo, I still got to see the sequel to um, Star Fox, whereby, you know, it's a new crew, the graphics are better and whatnot. And so I tell you this, um, this should be the definitely next film in this Nintendo 64, Nintendo Cinematic Universe. And let me give you a couple of reasons why. One, I think you want to make sure and ensure that your character, that the next project should be somewhat a little bit risky, okay? Granted, everybody knew Mario from for decades. We all know Mario. We've all grown up with Mario from the generation before me to my generation to the generation after me. We've all played the games at one point. We've all done what we wanted to do with them. And the same could be said for Le for The Legend of Zelda. That's Everybody knows about, well, not as much as Mario, but I would say that a good number of people, a good amount of people know about The Legend of Zelda as well. You say the same thing about Shamus and Pokemon, to Shamus to being a lesser extent. But Star Fox, you don't really get a lot about Star Fox. You don't really hear much about him. And it's not that he's an unpopular candidate. We've all played with him in... Uh, Super Smash Brothers from the first Super Smash Brothers game that came out. Um, obviously, um, Star Fox came out in 1993. Then N64 Star Fox came in 1997. And Star Fox 64 was the one I played. And there wouldn't be a sequel to um, any type of uh, N64 until 2002. You had a couple more games with the last Star Fox game coming out in 2017. I think that if you want to show that, hey, we're serious about this and we can make gold out of any character, you start with Star Fox. Is it a bit risky? Yes. But at the time frame of it, I think Star Fox is a cool enough character that you can do it. And you can also pick up from where the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, picked up where it left off. Now, the MCU could have started off with any character. And of course it couldn't because, you know, the rights were all split at the time. But... They decide to start off with Iron Man. And from that, it launched its universe from a B-class character to what it is now. And they also took more risks with Captain America. Well-known technically, but still a kind of a B-class character. Same thing with Thor as well. Your Spider-Mans were with Sony. Your X-Men were with Fox at the time. Fantastic Four was also with Fox at the time as well. So... That in and of itself created problems. But with this one, Nintendo owns everything. They own all these characters. And I think that by far, by far, the best part to do it would be to have Star Fox as your next 
not a Nintendo Cinematic Universe. Sorry, kind of lagging on myself. We get to number two. And I go with the amount of characters. There are so many characters that you can do and use for this um, use for this game, basically. All, obviously, we know all about Star Fox, basically. We know about Star Fox in general. You got Fox McCloud, you got Peppy Hair, you got Falco and Slippy. The original four that will always be there. In addition, in, adi- in addition to that, you know, you've got you've got obviously the main villain. You got Andros as well, the big bad. You've got his rival band of mercenaries that work for him. You know, Star Wolf. You've got Leon. You've got Andrew, and then you've got uh, Pigma Dangar. The, the main people. And of course, with Pigma's case, we all know that he um, betrayed Star Fox's father. That leads up to great stories. But you have a wide variety of characters. And like I said, even though I did not play the... Um, I did not play any of the games, any of the Star Fox games after Star Fox 64, you still have what I saw was um, Star Fox Adventures, which... Um, in and of itself is a is basically you expand more of these characters as well. You add it and you can do more villains. Basically, you put in crystal as well, general scales, plenty of things to go. So there's like a and there's a there's a wide variety of characters to use for basically, and the story itself takes place eight years. But I'm not going to go into that. Back to that number two. The point two is that you have deep lore, almost as not as. You have an actual deep lore, basically. And for those who said that, oh, the uh, the 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 plot for Mario is paper thin, well, there might be a point for that. But it's still Mario the same. But if you want a, a Nintendo character that has some deep lore, that has some deep story, boom, there you have Star Fox with the characters and the universes and everything like that. Which leads me to my third point. You can stick it in Disney now. None of us were disappointed last year with Lightyear. I know I was, because for all intents and purposes, we expected a return to form in terms of Buzz Lightyear and Star Command, where Buzz would be going on adventures, stopping Zerg with his crew, hopping from planet to planet throughout the galaxy, protecting the people, being a hero, and fighting Zerg's armies or whatever other antagonists that came from the old cartoon show. We did not get that. We got a very weird interstellar type of story that did not fit Buzz Lightyear as a character. And I'm not even going to expect, not even going to put the fact that people wanted it to be a Toy Story movie per se. I expected Buzz Lightyear to be its own story um, based off the character, not connected to the Toy Story universe. But that's not here nor, that's not neither here nor there. With Star Fox, everything that you can put that everything that lacked in Buzz Lightyear can be applied, basically, basically to Star Fox, the ships, the different planets, the adventures, the dog fights, Star Fox with his laser, even though he's not in a space suit, he's got his weaponry, he's a fighter, he will go in, you know, the rivalries, once again, going from planet to planet, the lore, the different worlds, that you can actually world build. Star Fox would not make the mistake of being stuck on one planet for the entire movie because you know if you played the N64 games, once you beat one planet, you're on to the next planet. And you keep hopping and hopping and hopping and it keeps you engaged. It kept me engaged as a kid when I played it and I definitely know as a film it would keep a lot of people, kids and adults, engaged as well. So it hit Disney where it hurts and said that, hey, you didn't like that light your film? Star Fox can give you a better film. Definitely like that. Another thing, I guess you can still go into sticking into Disney, is that, oh, these are anthropomorphic animals, you know, and you know, that used to be Disney's thing. We saw the Zootopia, we're seeing with the countless of other animal led films, like the Punching of Dalmatians, Robin Hood, Lion King, you know, Emperor's New Groove, you know, a wide variety of these characters. And, you know, let, let Nintendo say, hey, we're going to take Disney's lunch, too, in that realm as well. That's new humor there. The fourth, um, the fourth point is you can borrow a little bit from that Top Gun Maverick crowd. Now, granted, Top Gun Maverick was the same thing, simple plot, you know, 
God comes back, God of Tarvin, trains people, new generation, they come, they fight the enemy, boom, there you go. Um, people love the flight aspects of Top Gun Maverick. You can apply a lot of that to Star Fox's ships. These are all pilots. All four of them are pilots. All four of them can do what they can do. You've got Star Fox, you've got Falco, his like first mate. You've got Slippy, the young ace. And you've got Peppy, the old war dog retiree who still got enough fight in him as the veteran of the crew. So much you can do for that. And I know that a lot of people liked it. And I know that this would essentially could be a Tom Gun Maverick for kids if done well. And I believe that it can do well because Nintendo, as mentioned, loves their properties. Very much so. And last but not least, number five is this is your chance to reintroduce Star Fox again, very much so, to the wider public. Because let's be very real. Though, I remember, right now it's been over 25 years since uh, Star Fox 64 came out, which was really the game that... Um, the game that changed it, that um, that made Star Fox popular. But even since then, while you know you've had about seven games come out since uh, Star Fox 64 1997, Star Fox has not really captured the wider audience as other Nintendo properties. We've seen Mario, of course, do its thing. We've seen um, The Legend of Zelda obviously make hit after hit and win various awards, do its thing. Even... Um, Metroid Prime with Shamus. That's also done its thing as well. But we've never really seen that from Star Fox. It's been quite dormant for almost getting to over a quarter century now. And nobody really talks about it as well. And even now, Metroid Prime has had a remastered version, basically, that has been released. And Metroid Prime has had a bunch of games that have been coming out basically um, in succession for uh, since 1986. And so Star Fox has an opportunity through Nintendo, if it wanted to make a film, to reinvigorate its brand and offer an even bigger and just as popular feather in the cap of Nintendo in terms of making new properties. You can get out a new game. You might have more people interested in the old Star Fox game, and that could create a remaster too on the Switch. And I know that kids were definitely on the Switch who want to be playing these type of flying games, these pilot games, you know, tanks as well, because Star Fox did have a futuristic tank as well. And it's just, you know, it's just so much that um, Star Fox could benefit as a brand from having a very good, well-made movie as well. So, yeah, that's uh, five reasons why I think that um, Star Fox should definitely be the next film to be entered into this new Nintendo cinematic universe. I think it has a lot of potential. It's definitely family friendly. I think that the design and even the method of this of Star Fox as a game and even later entries would not only attract children, of course, because I loved and Star Fox 64, but adults, especially adults like myself who play the game, and just adults who just want to see maybe some good old-fashioned dogfighting. And if you're worried about a plot-thin story, I think Star Fox can assuage a lot of that fear. It's not that I thought that it was an issue for Mario. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notifications to make sure you're notified. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you think Star Fox should be the next entry to the Nintendo Cinematic Universe? Or do you think that, you know, maybe they should just go through the routes and, you know, focus on the hot thing now, which would be The Legend of Zelda? I wouldn't complain. Or do you think that maybe they should go for another hot item like uh, Metroid Prime? Or just make more movies from what they have with Mario, which would be like a Donkey Kong movie or a Luigi movie or a Princess Peach movie or some other type of related property in the Mario universe. So anyway, thank y'all for watching. And I hope to have more videos up when I can. Peace.